Come on, I need to hear more than that. Y'all ready for the word? Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. My friend and my brother, and give you a few information, pieces of information about him. Bishop James Manigault Jr. has the character of David, a man after God's own heart. His love and admi admiration for God is unmistakable through his preaching, his worship, and his praise. Pastor Manigault has served in ministry many years, prophesying, preaching, and teaching God's word, both nationally and internationally. Pastor Manigault is the senior pastor of Preparing the Way of the Lord International Ministries. He was born of Pastors James and Rita Manigault in Fort Hood, Texas on November 17th. The second of three children, he, he would be called a man of peace. When he was just a child, the Lord Jesus Christ came to him in a vision and told him how he would use him to defeat the enemy and that he would be with him through all that he would do and face. He was called into ministry at the age of five. Let me read that again. He was called into ministry at the age of five. And he, y'all, okay, some of y'all are not impressed. Uh, I'm gonna tell you how old I am when I tell you this. I, I came up, we went to Get Start. And then we went to kindergarten, round about five. I'm already impressed that he was called at the age five. And, I, and if I know him well enough, he probably knew he was called at age five. That's, a, that's an anointed brother right there. And he preached his first, first message at the age of seven which was, think about this, putting on the whole armor of God. His vision is to empower the people of God with the weapons of the Lord. Boy, if that's not timely, it sounds like Bible study last night. He met the love of his life, Kimberly Manigault in 2005, and they were married on May 26, 2007. From the union, uh, they are blessed with three wonderful children, James the third, let me make sure I say this right, is it Keliah? Kalea, thank you very much. So we got James the third, Kalea, and Micah Manigault. Let's bless the Lord for his children. He received his training under God. Prophet David Terrell of Jesus New Covenant Church, Pastors James and Rita Manigault, and Bishop Eric D. Reynolds, the pastor of the House of Prayer Church of Deliverance. He is currently furthering his education through Liberty University, seeking his doctorate of divinity. He has preached the word of God all over the world, including Saudi Arabia, the Philippines, Baghdad, Iraq, and Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask that you rest your seats, those who are uh, physically here in the auditorium. And we introduce and we bring to you at this time, my friend and my brother, God's man for this hour, Bishop James Manigault. Let's receive him at this time. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God praise in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Just, just a moment. And I'm going to bring up the praise and worship team. But what I saw uh, earlier and what I heard of the Lord was, I will meet you where you will go. In other words, if you want your miracle, you have to go to where the miracle is. I, I want to make sure that you understand what I'm saying. The Bible says Zacchaeus heard Jesus was coming by and had a desire to see him. Is there anybody in the house that has a desire to see him? Come on, we're not here for church. If you're here for church as usual, you're in the wrong place. But the Bible says he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Zacchaeus was so desperate that no matter who was looking at him, he went to the top of the sycamore tree. He was not afraid of the naysayers. He was not afraid of those that would judge him for he wanted to see the Lord. And because he wanted to see the Lord, look at the results. You see, we live in a crowd of people where everybody don't want God. We want religion. We want church. We want uh, people to pat us on the back and say, you did well. But he went to the top and the Bible says as Jesus was passing by out of all the people there, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. And I heard him say, if you'll meet me there, I'll come to your house today. Come on. Can we give God some praise in this place? We must get to the place where songs 
are no longer just songs do you really understand what you're asking for when you say those words the bible says god inhabits the praises of his people and i'm going to challenge you just for a moment to step outside of yourself come on i don't know about you but i see the glory of the lord in this place and i sense the lord saying these words for the lord desires to transition this house you are in a place of transitioning you are in a place say the lord of transitioning and i am calling you i am beckoning unto you come nigh it is not merely in your giving but it is in your worship it is in your worship it is in your worship say up the lord come nigh draw nigh unto me and i will draw nigh unto you and i will remove the tatteredness and the broken pieces for even now the land has been dry but i come to water the land saith the lord by the power of my spirit for did i not declare in the last days i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh yea right now hallelujah just begin to worship him come on hallelujah all over this place begin to open up your mouth and give him worship come on he desires worship come on he desires nobody should have to prompt you to worship nobody should have to tell you if you understand who got miracles it was those that were desperate for the lord rewards those that diligently seek him and i hear the lord say that i'm going to pour out my spirit in this service as never before father let the heavens be opened in this place how can they i commend every door that has been shut spiritually every spirit of witchcraft every spirit of variance every yuka every spirit of the serpent in the name of jesus that is trying to suck the life out of the people of god we bind it now for you have not given us the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind i release the worship out of your belly will flow rivers of living water out of your belly will flow said the lord all over this place lord we release the angels that everything that has been trying to stop them from going forth for the lord said i've already given you the keys my servant i've already given you the keys but there are some enemies that have tried to stop what god is trying to do but they shall not prevent nay for the Lord has sent the sons of God even into that mist to decree and declare every chain is broken every curse is destroyed in the name of Jesus we cover this place now by the power of the Holy Ghost and I serve the enemy notice. 
Shaya. For I seen a chain in the spirit wrapped around this house. And it seemed like every time you would grow, something would happen to cause the ministry to backtrack, to fall. But the Lord said, Nay, not in this season. For I have broken the chain. Come on, the chains are broken now. Can somebody release it? Can somebody give God worship? Even now, the chain is broken over this house. I hear a release, a sound of abundance, and the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place. Every yoke, every chain. In the Bakoshande, in the name of Jesus, Fa'inana, I have already given you the sword. And the Bashete, I've already given you the wisdom. And the other Robosha, and the gifts of God are being released. The gift of the fivefold ministry in this place. Iandarabasha, Rekandiando, Maya, from the apostolic gift to the prophetic uh, I feel a release uh, to the evangelical uh, to, the other little uh, to the teachers uh, uh, to the pastors uh, we release now uh, the gift of the fivefold uh, in the underbushe uh, to operate uh, without measure uh, in this place today marks a new day say the Lord and the enemy that you have seen, you shall see no more. In the name of Jesus, even in the realm of a government. Now, I don't know where this is coming from, but I heard the government was against you. But I see God moving the hand of the government out of the way. I don't know if it's something trying to be released in the realm of expansion, but something God said uh, they've been watching you uh, because what God has been doing around this place uh, and they were not pleased uh, so they set up an attack against you uh, but the Lord said I move now uh, I strike now uh, for the heart of the king uh, is in the hand of God and he moves now come on somebody give him praise all over this place come on hallelujah Come on, give him praise. Come on, like you believe it. Come on, give him praise in this house. Come on, give him praise in this house. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and give him praise. There is a sound of victory. There is a sound of victory. Come on. Hey, we do war in the spirit. For we do not war after the flesh, but we war in the spirit. There is a sound of abundance. Hey, there is a sound of victory. Bring it down just a little bit. Hallelujah. Come on, there's a sound of victory. Come on, you can't get tired now. Huh? What you do out there, ha, ha, it breaks in here. Huh? I can tell where you're worshiping out there or not. Because huh? you bring the fire. Huh? Some of you came looking for the fire. But you're supposed to bring it with you. Huh? You're supposed to bring it with you. Huh? Why coming? Huh? To look for a reed. Huh? Shaking in the wind. Huh? What did you come to see? Huh? I came to see huh? the glory of the Lord. In this place, hallelujah, and there is a sound of victory that God brings. You can be seated if you can. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First of all, giving God the honor, my Father. Hallelujah. I don't say that because some people say. They call him father, but he said, you'll know my children. My children bear fruit of me. Everybody can't call him daddy. Some people call him savior, but we don't call him Lord. And there's a difference in the manifestations. And he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Do I have any believers in the house? 
I need you to understand what I just said to you. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. What qualifies you to do the miracles and the works of God is your belief. How you vision, how you see your God. If you see him as something small, then that's all he will ever do for you. But does anybody know our God is big? Come on. I said, does anybody know that our God is big? The reason you've been getting small miracles is because that's where you have positioned him. In your praise. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Faith is an action word. You can't say you believe God, but you sit down, hallelujah, on what God said. Don't you know when we come into the house, this is supposed to be a time of celebration? Come on, see, that's the problem. You don't know why you're here. We're supposed to be walking around, huh? high-fiving each other, talking about what you do to the devil this week. Huh? I ran him over. Huh? I slid his neck. Huh? I trampled over him huh? with the works of the power of God. Huh? We're not supposed to come in. Huh? Ah, huh? all downtrodden, huh? all, all silly huh? ah, huh? we're supposed to come in, huh? it's party time. Hallelujah. I said it's party time. Look at the neighbor and say, what you here for? Come on, amen, praise the Lord. This is a time of rejoicing. Hey. Our God has caused us to triumph over our enemy. The reason COVID got control of you is because you don't believe God like you say you do. Oh, I didn't say COVID went real, uh, but my God is realer than COVID. I said this before the pandemic began. Uh, the Lord told me a word from the church. Uh, he said, if I allow it to touch you, it's to show the world how to deal with it. So they know uh, that I'm God uh, and I'm powerful. Uh, you can get COVID and send it back to where it came. Uh, you can get COVID and tell them, uh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, uh, whom I believe and serve. Go back, try up. I curse you. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I ain't got to the message yet. Just stay with me. You see, the easy and the reason is this some of us have been walking in baby mode for way too long. You've been walking, expecting God to carry you. That was good for the first trimester in season. But now God has brought you out. And God is saying, I'm trying to teach you how to walk. Have you been calling him and wondering why he's not answering you? Because he said it's time to grow up. For they that know their God will be mighty and do great exploits. What are you doing in the kingdom now? Come on, what are you doing in the world now? I didn't say they got to know your name, but he said in my name. During COVID, before it came, the Lord said, tell the people what to do. And so we walked around. People were afraid. Fear is a door that opens into your life. I'll prove it to you. Many people consider and think that Job, God opened the door in Job's life. But go back and read the scripture. Job said, the thing that I feared the worst has come upon me. Job feared some stuff in his life. And it caused the door to be open where the enemy was able to gain access. Because he feared feared some stuff uh, and God is trying to get you to get rid of that fear because uh, COVID is the least of your worries uh, hell is enlarging itself uh, there are some demons being released uh, that have gotten worse than COVID uh, and they're coming to the church uh, oh you better listen to what I'm saying to you uh, they have been assigned uh, to the true house of God uh, because they're coming uh, to deceive the body 
The Bible says if the enemy transforms himself into an angel of light, he's coming to deceive the body of Christ, not the world. The world's already deceived. He's coming to the house uh, so that he can try to scare you, uh, get fear sold into your life. Uh, so you got walking around. Uh, it's not that I don't wear the mask. Uh, I wear the mask, uh, but my confidence is more in the God uh, and the blood uh, than it is in the mask. Uh, this ain't the first pandemic. Uh, the church has ever been through. Uh, it's called leprosy. Uh, and before leprosy, uh, Jesus uh, exposed himself uh, and healed the leper uh, and showed them uh, the power of the kingdom. Why are you preaching like that? Because the Lord told me, I know my assignment in the earth. My assignment given by God is the awakening of the sons of God. That's my assignment. See, you got to know why you have been assigned to the earth. And when I was born, hallelujah, the Lord spoke to me at a very early age, as you heard. He appeared unto me and came and said, I'm going to use you to stir and awaken my sons. Hear me. Sonship does not refer to male nor female. Sons are born after the spirit. Ah, ah thank you, Jesus. For the Bible says, and this kind was not born of flesh. They were not born of the will of man. But they were born after the will of the Father, after his spirit. You need to know who you are. You are no longer human like you think you are. You are a son of God. He said Jesus was the first of his kind. And after him would come many brethren. If the world can do one with one Jesus, what makes you think that the world can conquer 10,000? So today, somebody say today, what I want to teach on is the kingdom, the power within. Just take my time. Hallelujah. The kingdom, the power within. I said to you, what gives you the ability, what gives you the authenticity to do miracles is not a title. Before I ever possessed the title, the Lord used me. To pray for folk. And people would get healed. On arrival to Baltimore. There was a man in a coma for six months. And the Lord. Said to me and my wife. See you got to hear God's voice. When we hear. Of the things impossible. I don't think it's. Something that can't be done. I look at it as. All right God what you getting ready to do. Because if you allow anything to happen in the earth, it is for a reason. So I said to the Lord, what do you want to do? This man's been in a coma for six months. People have prayed for him and nothing seems to happen. So the Lord says, fast for three days and I'm going to send you to the hospital and I'm going to open him up. I'm going to make him get up out of bed. And so when I heard the Lord say those words. We begin to shout and praise God then. Amen. We didn't wait to get to the hospital. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. And so my wife had never really seen miracles. Because she grew up in a different relationship status with God. So you can grow up in church and still not know him. You can be baptized and still not know him. You can speak in tongues and still not know him. Oh, I'm talking real today. And some of you, you can do miracles and still not know him. For he said, many will come to me in the last day saying, Lord, did we not? Did we not do many wonderful works? Did we not cast out devils? You got to understand the name of Jesus carries power alone. Whether you believe or not, in my name, he said, you can cast out devils. But that's not a sign that you know me. He said, you got to understand what it means to be in relationship. A covenant with me. You see, when I was growing up, I thought I knew him too. And though I was chosen by God at a very young age and he appeared unto me, I didn't know him. And it wasn't until about 24, 23, when I got a desire and I looked at my parents and they were going through hell. I'm talking about real saints. Not because they were my parents, 
but they were going through hell. You ever seen the people go through hell? And yet they were smiling and the smile was real. And I couldn't understand it because, you know, people fake the funk today. We put on what we call church. We walk into the building and we put on the facade that we know God. We put on the facade. Listen, we put on a suit and we think the suit means we know God. We, we think the gift means that we know God. But the gifting and the calling of God are without repentance. Which means that God will use you and you still don't know who he is. And so though I was praying for folk and blind eyes was coming open and the lame were walking. I remember that in the midst of my sin, the Lord said to me, as I felt the blood of Jesus coming down, I was in the midst of sin locked up because I was playing the game like many church folk. Come on, I'm going to be real with you. See, I was just like you. I said, Lord, you certainly are using me. And I know I got to know you because things are happening. But then after I left the church, I would go do me. Come on. I would go do me. See, I'm not afraid of looks because you ain't got no heaven to hell to put me in. I've truly been delivered. And God wants to deliver some of you now because you've been hiding behind the cloak of darkness. Hallelujah. Perpetrating the fraud, but the prophet's eyes are open. Somebody say the prophet sees you. Oh, I see you. Don't make me call you out. Hear what I'm saying to you. If the Lord exposes you, the first thing you need to know, he exposes you because he don't want you to end up in hell. God don't send nobody to hell. We choose to go there through the things we do. So I was in the midst of, of sin. Praying for folk. And people saying, man, you so anointed. God with you. You know how they puff you up. The Lord must certainly be with you. But nobody knew I was locked up with pornography. Nobody knew I was locked up in pornography before a seed had been sown in my life. Be careful of the seeds that are sown in your life you don't know are there to produce a harvest because you are miracle growth. Look at your neighbor and say, I am designed to grow things. Come on, you didn't catch that. Yeah. <laughs> I am designed to grow things. You are designed to grow. You are miracle grow. And so the enemy knows whatever seed is planted in your life will produce a harvest. And so he, he comes to really kind of put seeds in your life. You think that conversation that you had last week or this week didn't bother you because you're just so good. But let me say something to you. That gossiping seed that was planted on the inside of you was there for a reason. You don't think it has no root. But be careful of the seeds. For out of the seeds will spring up roots. And if you know anything about seed bearing, you never see the plant before the root already has grown. And the enemy has designed to to swallow you up in this season he has designed to choke the life out of you because of the seeds that are being planted on the inside of you but the bible says guard your heart above all else for out of it comes the issues of life you got to learn that you can't hear from everybody you got to learn you can't watch everybody i know they look good i know they're doing miracles but god gave you a shepherd after his own heart god gave you a shepherd and a teacher and he said stop eating off every plate come on you ain't gonna hear me but you got to understand when God gives you a father when he gives you a shepherd we ain't had no conversation about this when God gives you a shepherd he gives you a father you got to understand their job is to grow you and when you are a child to be honest you never understood your father I didn't understand mine when he said eat these things they'll make you grow up I said no they don't taste good because I didn't understand it but when I was a child, I thought as a child. But God said it's time to grow up. Come on, look at your neighbor and say grow up. Every word that is given will not always be an easy word. 
there will come a time where God says in order to dislodge you uh, from the place of comfort uh, oh some of you uh, have gotten comfortable uh, bring me a chair real quick uh, you gotten too comfortable uh, and the Lord said uh, the word I have to give you uh, is not a comfortable word uh, this is a dislodging word uh, cause you've been comfortable for too long uh, uh, see you can get in a place of comfort uh, where an e word uh, won't dislodge you from that place uh, you've gotten lackadaisical uh, so I've got to give you something uh, that will dislodge you uh, from the place uh, something that'll break the chains uh, and break the peace uh, off of the hearing uh, so you can get up uh, and rise to the place uh, that I've called you to walk in uh, for you have gotten too comfortable said the Lord You see, we can lose track of who we are because we live in a world and we're listening to all the media and we're listening to all the stuff and we forget that we are not of this world, that our father is not of this world. We're not meant to walk like they walk. We're not meant to talk like they talk. We're meant to be different. We are meant to change the world. The world ain't supposed to change you. If you're a designer, design some things uh, and change the world uh, everybody ain't called to preach uh, if you're a builder uh, build some things uh, and change the world uh, if you're a money maker uh, make it uh, and change the world for God said uh, I will raise up uh, my kingdom see the Lord said to tell you that it's time for the kingdom to arise. You have been sitting for far too long on the sideline. You've been sitting for far too long watching. Come on, ain't you tired of watching the devil run through your neighborhood? Ain't you tired of walking the devil run through your family? Come on, you ain't got to call the preacher. He said, behold, I give unto you power. I give unto you power. I give unto you power. Why are you calling him? Because you don't know what to do. The reason you don't know because you ain't in the closet. You're not in fellowship with him. Sometimes we can become so dependent on the man that we forget the man ain't God. The man is designed uh, to point us back to him. Uh, the man is designed uh, to show us the way, uh, but he's never meant to be God. See, sometimes we become so comfortable and so we don't understand. It's not about the place. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. I'm tired of that church. All they do is this. But you don't know. God brought you here because he's designing you. Before he builds you, he's got to gut you out. He's got to get some things out of you. And that's why you're here. Every church don't have it all. That's why it's a kingdom thing. The issue is that we, we go to a church that we think we like. Oh, the praise and worship team is real good. They play real good over there. But let me say this to you. All of that is great. But if it don't carry no anointing, it's the anointing. I know preachers that can preach you under the roof. But it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. I've got friends that are doctors. And what they try to figure out is you ain't been to school like us. But how do you preach like that huh? how huh? does the anointing huh? to destroy the powers of darkness huh? because huh? the bible says again huh? they that know their god so it's a kingdom thing somebody shout it's a kingdom thing so sit down hear me my job is to awaken the sons of god there are some of you that are going to be awakened today. Some of you ain't going to accept it and it's all right. Because it ain't your time yet. When you understand that, it's all right. As a spiritual servant of God before every service, I see how the service is going to turn out. All right. Let me help some of you. 
if you are seers or prophets, before the service happens, God shows me how the service will come out. But it's never how it comes out. Now that's confusing, right? But it's truth. What he shows me is what he wants to do. The issue is that we are in control through what we respond or don't respond to. You see, before this service happened, I was in prayer and I saw the power of God hit this place. And I saw people being filled with the Holy. Nobody had to lay hands. Nobody had to do anything. If you didn't have the Holy Ghost because you lifted your hands and you was praising God, all of a sudden the spirit quickened within you and you were filled with the utmost power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and the people were trying to figure out what was going on. It's called the fire because the promise has already been released. And if a promise has been released, that means it's not waiting. We ain't waiting on it. It's waiting on us. That means at any second, if you ain't received it, you can receive it. I said at any second, you ain't got to wait till what we call the service getting good. If you're hungry enough, you can stand up now and say, Lord, I want you. I've got to have you. I need you, Lord. Greater than anything else. For you said, if any man hungers and thirsts, he shall be filled. See, we wait uh, till the music is right. Uh, we wait uh, till somebody saying a good word. Uh, we wait, uh, but when you're desperate, uh, when you're desperate, uh, you don't care who's watching you. Uh, if I gotta lay on the floor, uh, I'll lay. Uh, if I gotta throw myself down, uh, I'll throw it down uh, at the feet of Jesus. The question is, how hungry are you? Come on, how thirsty are you? And so I saw miracles manifesting in this place. I saw cancer being read. I saw people getting up with all kind of manner of disease. Not because I got any power. He said, in my name, in my name, in my name. Do you believe the name of Jesus? Jesus said unto them after he healed them, he said, thy faith has made the old. They were astounded because they said, wait, wait, we thought you were making us whole. He said, no, it's your belief in what God can do. It's your belief uh, that he is no longer God. Uh, he said, but watch this. Uh, and when you pray, uh, Luke 11 and 1, uh, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. He said, when you pray, uh, say ye therefore in this manner, uh, our father, uh, somebody call him daddy. Uh, daddy, uh, I need your help. Uh, father, uh, I need your help. Uh, you're not a distant God. Uh, you are my father. The issue is that we've been calling him God for too long and you don't know he's your daddy. He's waiting on you to call his name. And when you call his name, he says, I'll run to you. My ears are open to you. So, the kingdom of God. Let's get to it. A kingdom. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is a country state or territory ruled by a king a kingdom is a country a place a state territory ruled by the king it is the spiritual reign or authority of god the spiritual reign or the authority of god that means wherever he is he reigns <laughs> wherever he is he reigns somebody say that wherever he is he reigns now, if you understand that concept and really let it lodge in your spirit, that means nothing can reign in your body if he reigns. Mm. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Holy Spirit, allow it to come to our understanding that we may walk in the fullness of liberty. For you said in your word, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. 
So we exercise the freedom of the king inside of our mortal body. So whatever exists here that is not supposed to be, I expel it out of my body. I expel it, come on, out of my body. Sickness, you can't dwell here. Uh, disbelief, you can't dwell here. Uh, cancer, you can't dwell here. For where the spirit of the Lord. Depression, you can't dwell here. You can't dwell. You can't dwell. Generational curse, you can't dwell. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So I exercise my legal right, my legal authority over this body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody, you're going to feel it. Hallelujah. What's going to happen is your body going to start to recover. It's out of your mouth. Hear what I'm saying to you. We've been in revivals. <laughs> Where people have got up while preaching was going on and fell down on their face and began to worship God. And they said, I'm healed. We've been in revival with those that had AIDS. Come on, AIDS is curable. It's called the blood of Jesus. Where people have been cured from AIDS because of the blood of Jesus. I'm telling you, there is nothing impossible. So the kingdom of God also called the kingdom of heaven is the spiritual realm somebody say spiritual realm over which god reigns as king are the fulfillment on earth of god's will which means you can be right in the midst of the kingdom and not see it you can be right in the midst of the kingdom and not feel it because the kingdom is not a feeling oh peace is not a feeling it has a feeling but it's not a feeling joy has a feeling it's not a feeling but it has a feeling so the issue is we wait to a feeling comes to experience what we believe is the kingdom but the kingdom has already come somebody is waiting for joy, but joy is already here. It's waiting on you to grab it and manifest it. When you understand what real peace is, your situations or outcome will no longer control your praise. But your praise will control your outcome. In other words, you start praising God and because you praising him, things will start shifting. See, the enemy has duped you. And that's why some of us don't get the breakthrough because we are waiting to see it before we praise. Don't get it twisted. It ain't that my life is just so great. It's that I believe God. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It ain't that every bill is paid. I believe God. And because I believe him, he said, never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. What God has done to me is he has shown me just how powerful he is. He said, and I will supply all of your needs according to my riches. And go, let me say this to you. All of us ain't meant to be rich. put myself in the corner because some of y'all looking like you ready to pick up stones uh, like I just burst your bubble but let me say this to you uh, everybody ain't meant to be rich uh, there are some God said listen I want you to trust me uh, ah, that's it uh, I realized that a long time ago he said like he said to the disciples take nothing of yourself uh, except one staff uh, and one coat why because you uh, must trust me for my supply uh, I'm not giving it to you in advance i'm not giving it to you see take your eyes off the folk they'll mess you up you mad because you ain't got it like they did but you wouldn't meant to have it like they have it there are some of you 
who God said, listen, I put it to the side. And every time you need it, just come to me and I'll give it to you. But I'm not giving you the wealth of millions. I'm your supply. I'm your supply. I am your wealth. I am your all in all. Just come to me. Looking at folk, you'll get mad because you'll be like, God, I'm praising more than they're praising. And I don't understand why I don't got what they got. I don't understand why they driving better than I'm driving. I don't understand why they got a bigger house. And God said, you didn't ask me. Oh, uh, you too busy focus on their life and what they got. I told you I would supply. But you didn't ask me. And because you didn't ask me, I ain't give it to you. Hallelujah. So kingdom, the rule and reign. The most important thing I could say about the kingdom of God that would help you make sense out of all of the uses in the Bible is this. And it is the basic meaning of the word kingdom. Write this down. God's reign. When you understand kingdom, you will understand God's reign. Somebody say God's reign. What is his reign? Reign is his royal authority. It is the dominion, sway, or influence of him. In other words, he can sway the opinions of people. I don't understand why I don't got no promotion. For promotion does not come from the east or the west. You working for man, but you should be working for God. The problem is you working for man. I'm going to prove to you you working for man because you show up late. If you was working for God, you would be there on time. But I'm working for man. Take a page out of Joseph's book. He was working for God, though he was working for man. And because he was doing it for God, he did everything in excellence. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. So you're still working for man because you ain't on time. Your attitude says you're working for man. And you wonder why you ain't got the promotion. I don't care how bad they treat you. Still, whatever you do, you do it as unto the Lord. And I work for Uncle Sam. Now, my battle buddy is right back there. He was in the military with me. I'm going to tell you right now, they used to, they use us as the goats. Every heavy thing they could put on us, they put on us. And we would carry it. Usually the 50 cows are carried by two people. They say, carry that 50 cow. Put this with your extra stuff. Carry that. Carry this. And... We were upset, but I had a, a natural father when I got angry one time that said these words to me, give them no excuse to not promote you. He's sitting right there. I said, dad, look, everybody around getting promoted and they don't deserve it. I mean, they can't run, they can't do nothing and they getting promoted above me. Ain't no way. I mean, to be honest, come on, man. Some of them jokers were just fat as fat could be. Now, hear me, I was fat too. You know, because fat people call people fat. You know how we do. If you saw me about two years ago, you'd have been like, he don't look like that. Mm-hmm. I got my church in here, they'll tell you. I was about a hundred and something more pounds than I am right now. How you lose all that weight? It's called a life change. God said, if you want to serve me, change your life. Because I can't have you praying for folk and they get healed and you die from diabetes. You praying for folk that get healed, you die from cancer. They're going to have questions. So I said, Lord, for the betterment of the kingdom... No. For the betterment of your kingdom, no. God said, now I'll transform your body. And he did. People said, it looked like you lost it overnight. Because you have the power 
of life and death in your tongue. Well, Bishop, I told my body to lose weight and nothing happened because you ain't believe it. Belief without action ain't belief at all. You said it right, Minister Jamal. Lord, come on, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to lose it, Lord. Amen. Praise him. <clears throat> well, you ain't going to lose it because you don't believe because you're still eating it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't worry. I don't preach for applause. So, rain is to possess or exercise sovereign power. To possess or exercise sovereign power. Sovereign is possessing supreme or ultimate power. Amen. So God does not only rule, he reigns. And he's sovereign. Amen. Somebody say he's sovereign. he's sovereign. All right. Now, the kingdom creates a realm. And the kingdom creates a people. But the kingdom of God is not the same as the realm are the people. Psalms chapter 103 verse 19. Psalms 103 verse 19. How many heard the kingdom has come? How many people believe the kingdom is here? If you believe the kingdom is here, why are you turning your Bible? Just lift up your hand so I can see. Now don't lift your hand if you don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, then say, Lord, help my unbelief. Jesus said unto them, the kingdom has come. They said, Lord, I don't see it. Psalms 103 verse 19. The Lord hath appeared, prepared his throne in the heavens. Where is his throne? All right. And his kingdom ruleth over what? And his kingdom ruleth over some. And his kingdom ruleth over all. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version because I like what it says. And it says this. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. And his sovereignty rules over all the universe. So the basic meaning of the word kingdom as rule is that over his realm, it means that God's reign, his rule, he governs all things. He governs all things. Now, to govern means to control, direct, or strongly influence. Control, direct, or strongly influence. Write this down. Everything God does on earth, everything God does in his will is to establish his kingdom. Everything he does is to establish his kingdom. You were born to establish the kingdom of God. I'm going to help because some of us say, why was I born? You were born because God first created the heavens. After the heavens, he created the earth. He created the earth because according to Psalms 103, we just read his kingdom was established there. And so his throne. So he says now. Because it is a spiritual establishment, I need a tangible place. So I create a physical world where now my spiritual kingdom can become present and tangible. Tangible because people want to see it. Uh huh. Oh, I'm building you up. Amen. You just ain't got there yet. So everything exists. So that God can establish his kingdom. When he created the garden. In the midst of the earth. He created there. So that he could establish his kingdom. Watch. In the garden there was peace. There was food. There was no sweat. There was no uh, stress. There was nothing. He was the supplier of every need in the garden. Everything ran as it should be. Because the garden was a representation of heaven. So then God says, now I have established my kingdom. Some of us are waiting till we get to heaven to have peace. But the kingdom has already come. What did he just say? 
I don't have to wait to get to heaven to have peace. The kingdom has come. I don't have to wait to get to heaven to have joy. I ain't got to wait to get to heaven to have wholeness. It's already here. The issue is that the devil has influenced you through psychology and undoctrined uh, teaching you false uh, that we think we got to wait. Uh, so we wait. Well, I got to wait to get to heaven to have joy. I got to wait. I can't. Well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have peace. Uh, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have this. Uh, and when I get to heaven, I'm going to have that. Uh, and so we don't understand. And so creation is looking for peace they're looking for joy they're looking for God and the church has missed it because the Bible says creation is groaning in anticipation waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to be revealed when on earth now it's great it didn't say waiting for Jesus Jesus had his time oh it's not waiting on God God had his time and now they're waiting on the sons they're waiting on you they're waiting on you listen this is why he said ah and whatsoever you bind on earth I'll bind in heaven I'm no longer doing it on the earth. You have power over the earth. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, Bishop, I don't understand. Why was this stuff allowed to come in? Because the church was asleep. When we're supposed to be on our job, when we're supposed to be running the devil out, we were asleep. Whatever you bind, wherever two or three would agree as touching concerning any one thing, it shall be done. So I don't understand why the shootings and why this because we're too busy arguing over black and white when kingdom ain't got nothing to do with color the kingdom is a kingdom oh, I'm going to change your mind I know I just hurt your feelings but Jesus didn't come to preach like you preach he came to give the kingdom truth the issue is we too caught up in political debates uh, and our own ideology while the devil runs rampant uh, instead of standing up uh, you tired of the shootings uh, get somebody and y'all go down to that street corner and lock up that demon uh, we commend the spirit of death uh, that's over our city uh, that's been running rampant uh, that's killing folk uh, life and death uh, you said on the power uh, we bind you up If you bind the spirit, the spirit can't find the body. For spirits need body to carry out their work. And so the spirit has to be bound first. You can lock the man up, but the spirit will leave a man and go get into somebody else. Until the spirit be bound, then it will continue. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The issue is you too busy squabbling and fighting with everybody you see. Same issue still going on. You tried to get rid of it year one. It's still here. You tried to get rid of it year two. It's still here. Because you're dispelling people but not the spirit. Oh, help us Holy Ghost. Come on, I'm going to help you. You can get rid of folk, but you can't get rid of demons uh, unless you bind up the spirit. Somebody say it's time to bind it up. Father, I unlock and I unloose a heavenly mind in this house that we will stop fighting against one another and realize this is a kingdom house for a house divided against itself cannot stand. We will never get nowhere while we're polluting one another, backbiting one another, fighting against one another, tearing down one another. It's time to rise up. You mad, you tired of what they do, go pray for them. And then buy them a gift. Oh, I just hit your pocket. You say you love them. The truth is in the pudding. You can't buy nobody a gift if you really ain't got love for them. I ain't saying no chief gift. Buy them something you buy for yourself. I'm tired of folk talking about it. I forgive them. Uh, go out and buy them that Louis Vuitton bag you was looking for for yourself. 
Come on, go buy them Jordans or whatever you was going to buy like you bought it for yourself. And then say, I forgive you. Ah, without gritting your teeth. Without allowing your flesh to get the best of you. Come on, rise up. You say you want the mind of Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. How many times have you offended him and yet he allowed you to come back? How many times have you done him wrong? And he said, come back, my son. As far as the east is from the west, I forgive your sins. I cast them out. We want Jesus, but we don't want his love. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In me, Lord, as it is in heaven, let your will be done in my life. Come on, let that be the manner of your prayer. Let your will be done in my life. I know I'm tired. I want to give up on them. But Father, love them through me. That's the thing right there. Love them through me, Lord. Love them through me. I don't have it no more. And you're right, you don't. For it's in our weakness that his strength is perfected. When you learn to get out of the way. Stop trying to fake the funk. I can't love them no more because of what they did. But I know you can love them through me. So I'm yielding up my right to love. I'm yielding up my right to hold on to the anger. I'm yielding up my right uh, ah, to hold on to it. Uh, I'm giving it to you. Uh, for you can do it through me. But you don't know they did it on purpose. Yes, they did. And they looked you in the face while they did it. But don't you know he said... When you do that to embrace him, you know who you remind God of? His son. That while they were plucking out his beard, while they were casting lots, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Either Jesus was lying or he was telling the truth because they were doing it intentionally. You would think he, they knew he was doing it. And yet Jesus said something that would blow my mind. I read it over and over and over again. What do you mean they don't know what they're doing? They know who you are. They've seen the miracles. What do you mean? They don't know what they're doing. Father, they looked at you and they did it. You said, forgive them for they don't know. He said, they don't know who I really am. For if they did, they would have not done it. But they didn't know. And it's the same with you. If they really knew who you were, they would not have done it. But the truth is, they don't know. And the truth is, sometimes we don't know. That's why we keep doing it to ourselves. We keep abusing our own self. Because we don't know who we are. We don't know that this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you can't curse because you come into a building. But you can curse in your natural body. That means you give more credence unto a building than you do to the natural tabernacle. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Your body means more than this building. For he said, I have created a temple that I may come and dwell there. So your body belongs to him. Which means he goes with you wherever you go. Yep. Hallelujah. Come on. Yep. See the Lord told me because the problem is. We have made the building into a God. We worship the building. Well you know I ain't going to do that because I'm going into the house of the Lord. Come on we say it with such conviction. And we forget this is the house of the Lord. But I'm sleeping with everybody. But I'm doing all this other stuff. And I have forgotten. He dwelleth here. In this temple. It's alright if it's a. It hurt to say ouch. Mm -hmm. I'm on your row. Amen. So. Everything God does on earth. Is to establish his kingdom. So where? Where is the kingdom of God? Where? John 11, 20 through 25. Quickly. John 11, 20 through 25. And don't worry, I'm going to wrap up soon. 
But before we do, you're going to release the power of God in you. Somebody is in, in need of a miracle in this building. And you brought me here because you think I'm going to pray for folk. But the truth is, you're about to do something you ain't never done before. You're going to release your faith and somebody's going to be made whole. Why? Because the more you do it, the more powerful you will become. Because now you will know that God don't just work in those that are up here. He works from those that sit in sweet floors. Hallelujah. I said he works for drum players. Ah, holla. He works for ushers and deacons. He works for those that clean. He works for those that orchestrate and do everything else. Because before I ever had the title and before I ever had a mic, he was doing miracles and nobody knew me. And I still prefer it that way. Amen. Amen. I want nobody to know me. Because I hear people say it all the time. Man, if God doing all those miracles, why ain't I ever heard of you? Because I pray God keep me covered. Because people, they run after people with gifts. Don't run after me. I'll hurt your feelings. Well, I will because I'm going to train you. I'm a, I get people that call me all the time. Could you pray for this? And I say, yeah. Um, before I pray, you pray. Yeah. But, 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 but I need you to pray for my situation. Okay. But you're going to pray first. And after you pray, I'm going to agree with you. Because that's why I'm here. I'm here to agree. Because if I pray for you and you don't believe it, ain't nothing going to happen. Now you're going to be mad with me because you don't understand it's your faith that brings about the miracle. Stop getting mad with the preachers and folk praying over you when you don't believe them anyhow. It's your faith that made you whole. God, I need, I need that $20,000. And we, we get up here and we be like, all right, Lord, I know what they need. You said your word. So in the name of Jesus, before two weeks is out, you're going to receive the 20 and you don't believe it. Uh, then a man in the moon, you wasting my time. You wasting your time. So I ain't got no problem. I tell people, do you believe if you don't believe, go have a seat. Amen. Then come back when you get some faith. Well, I don't understand that. Jesus didn't do nothing like that. Yes, he did. The Bible says the house was full of folk. He walked in and the miracles get ready to be done. Jesus said, excuse me. Y'all doing a whole bunch of fussing in here. He said, y'all need to pick up and leave. Because I'm getting ready to do a miracle and you don't believe. So go on and take your exit strategy while I work those things of God. If we start doing stuff like that, the miracles will show up, y'all. Sometimes we got to put some folk out because they ain't there for no good reason anyhow. Mm, come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. The truth is that they're there to cause more mess than they are for the things of God. John 11. Let me compose myself. John 11, 20 through 25. Then Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord. Say it again. If what? My brother had not died. But I know that even now whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Now you would think she was telling the truth. She said a whole bunch of good words, but she didn't believe it. Man, Jesus. Man, had you been here, my brother. Last wouldn't have died. Jesus said, okay, I'm here now. I'm here now, so your brother, if you believe. And so she said, but I believe whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. 23, Jesus saith unto her, what? Now wait, she just said whatever you ask now. The father going to give it to you. Jesus said, your brother going to rise again. He wasn't talking about in the future. He was talking about now. Because that's what you just asked for, right? Then listen to her response. Say it again. Martha said unto him, verse 24, I know that he shall rise again. What? That's just like some of our faith right now. Oh, 
I heard the man of God is coming. Man, I, he, God going to do some great things. My Lord have mercy. I'm in anticipation. God going to do this. And I, I'm coming to receive. I'm coming to receive. Then we get there and they don't look like what we think they should. They don't preach like we think they should preach. I done showed up and people been like, that's it? I thought he was going to hover through there. Lightning was going to come out of his eyes. Then they see me walk in and they be like, that's all? Because they don't understand that all you got to do is open your mouth. That if I open my mouth, my faith says it shift like that. Because again, we're not waiting on the miracle. The miracle has been waiting on you to reach that place. Thy brother will rise again. In the resurrection at the last day, Jesus saith unto her, I, they had been looking at it from the wrong perspective. They thought the resurrection was a day. We still believe it to this day, but listen to what Jesus said. We're still looking for the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus turned to them and said, I am the resurrection. Ah, if a man believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall. Now we fast forward to the thief on the cross. And now you get the revelation of what Jesus said unto him. For he said, this man is not like us. And Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in power. What do you mean, Jesus? That man, he didn't go through all the things we got to go through. What do you mean he gonna be with me? Jesus said, don't you know I am the door and whatever I say goes, if I want to break protocol, I'll break protocol because I'm the one that wrote the rules in the first place. I wrote the law because I am the law. And they still didn't get it because Jesus said, uh, as God ministered, uh, he said that in the beginning uh, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So while God was opening up his mouth, Jesus was going, uh, let there be uh, this. Uh, that's why all things were created by him. And so when uh, he reached that place, uh, the reason the seas and the storm uh, and the waves uh, and everything understood him uh, is because he spoke from that place of not the flesh but he spoke from the new birth and some of you have been born again when you open up your mouth don't speak out of flesh don't speak out of self when it comes from self doubt can enter in but speak from the place of who you know who you are speak from that place that in the name of jesus i command you and when you say it the Bible says, if a man believe and does not doubt in his heart, he shall have what he asked. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Yes. We see Jesus do something that defies them all. Because if you do the study, a person that died in one or two days always had the potential to come back. They still do. You work, he used to work in the, and sometimes people ain't really dead. They're not. They just sleep. So they allowed him, oh, God did this thing right. He said, let them stink. Let them rot. Let the decay take place. So this can be undeniable about what I'm about to do. So nobody will ever have to look back and question the authenticity of my authority. Let him stink. Jesus didn't delay for no reason. He delayed because he wanted to prove to them just who he was. Let him rot. Ah, I don't care what's got you bound up. When he calls your name, it's your time. For the Bible says they had wrapped him up and then Jesus said, oh, watch this. Just roll it back. Uh, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, the Bible said, he didn't send nobody to get him. Let me say this to you. When you call their name, you ain't got to send the police. You don't need no ambulance. You don't need no medical team. When you call their name, they will find you. I don't care what tried to tie them down. 
at the sound of his name he said Lazarus and the Bible says he got up and he began to come forth and then all of a sudden he came out loose well who loosed him at the sound of his calling of your name nothing will prevent you I felt that thing hallelujah I don't know who's got somebody locked up but I dare you to call their name come on I dare you to call their name in the name of Jesus I don't care how long they've been on the street by the power that worketh in you according to your faith I dare you to call their name and call them home in the name of Jesus whatever stupid in the name of come home now loose your hold come on now You better be careful speaking like that. They're going to show up at your door tomorrow. You're going to say, what? I don't understand. You've been gone for years. All of a sudden, you're going to get a phone call. They're going to say, where you at? Ah, I felt something hit me. Well, when was it? Ah, about 12.54. Something shifted in my life. Because ah, I felt like somebody called my name. What were you doing at that time? I was giving God praise. Come on. If you called their name, you better put a praise on it. Like they coming home. You better bless God. Like you believe they coming home the bow I said you better bless him like you believe it see the issue is we wait but I'm telling you right now according to the power of God he sent forth his word Or if you pray, I'm agreeing with you. Ah, it ain't going to be no weak. I agree with you. I agree with you. Come on. I agree with you. They're going to show up in the next few days. I agree with you. That you might know who the Lord is. Not that it was a man. I ain't do nothing. I just agreed with what God said over you. hallelujah oh blessings lord father i believe your word you said you are the resurrection and the life i believe your god i believe what you said come Come on, there's a release in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, I feel a, I said I feel a release. I said I feel a release in this house. So I'm not going to push it, but I'm, there are some of you, the devil has been trying to wrap you up and keep you bound. Come on, trying to keep your praise silent, but there's an anointed praise on you. There's an anointed release on you that the enemy has been trying to keep you. Because if he can just get you to shut your mouth, if he can just get you to shut your mouth, nothing will happen. But I dare you, open up your mouth. Out of your mouth, out of your words, yay, Yaba. Release in this place. Release in this house. Hiya. Every spiritual blockage. Every spiritual blockage. Hakata Roshi Babaya. Hirabaka Satanero Boshi. Come on, I need some prayer people. I know, just walk around this place. Come on, begin to walk and praise God. Hayayayaya. Risha Kandia Boshi. Hirabaka Sha. There's a release in this house. I will not let the devil have the moment. Just walk around here. Hiya, yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus, I command every block. I 
I command it now. Be thou loosed. Be loosed. Come out of the walls. Come out of the floor. Come out of the seats. Come out in the name of Jesus. Hey, set on day. Rosha Baba. Loose. Go, Yabasha. Walls of Jericho. Come down. Jericho walls. Jericho walls. Jericho walls. Come down. Hey, hey, Shababaya, he taught a Baba Bakasa. Hallelujah. Hey, Kabasu, hey, the Babasa, Russia Tande, in the name of Jesus. Oka. I call the fire of heaven down into this place. Let your glory, let your fire, hear my voice. Present the masa. Ira In the name of Jesus, fire fall, fire fall, Holy Ghost fire, virgin fire, hey, living fire. Si ando la de masa te. Rendiando, Yaba Baba Kasha, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Hey, 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 loose, 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 loose. Hi, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, I sent some spirits. Hi, yeah. I sent some spirits in this place. That Baba Kasha, da 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 da. In the name of Jesus. Come on, you've been struggling with spirits. Lord of glory, we entreat you now. Enthrone in this house. Enthrone in this place. Enthrone, Lord. Enthrone, Lord. No, 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 no. Yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, see your door. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out. And touch. Touch, touch. Reach out. Ah. Yeah, Baba, Baba. In the name. Right now, Lord. Every seeker. Every spirit of hold back. Every spirit. I command you. In the name of Jesus. To leave this house. Yeah, yeah. Not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. I commend every spirit. Yeah, yeah, Holy, 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 Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Yabba Baba Baba. I heard the Lord say this that there is a spirit that has come against the worship of this house for there are times God tells you to move in an anointing of songs and you see the breakthrough but there's a hold back from the people Nay, like they just can't get into it but we break and we stand with you now Pray over him. We stand with you now. No, no, Basha. Lord, Lakashande, Lokoshiba. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He.
the next time you open your mouth the weight of fire shall be upon thee the weight of fire shall be upon thee for it has not been enough ha ah. Worship him. Worship him. Every ailment in your body. every ailment in your body God's beginning to break some things up and I'm beginning to heal your body serve the Lord even things in your body serve God I'm beginning to heal you will know that I the Lord for no man have revealed these things but I God know the healing power of Jesus flows over your body it's coming out it's coming out now serve the Lord come on begin to praise him He's healing your body for I have great work of you I have great work of you my son he wants you to know you are his son he wants you to know you are more than enough the devil has been trying to lie to you you are more than enough said the Lord yeah He'll do it for you. I said he'll do it for you. If you'll only trust him. Hallelujah. I sense the supernatural power of God in this place. But you must yield to him. He will tell you to do something you have never done before and it will feel strange hear me he says my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are my ways your ways saith the lord for as high as the heavens are above the earth there was a woman dealing with homosexuality and she said as i was ministering to her it don't feel natural I said it's not gonna feel natural she said it doesn't feel normal I said it's not gonna feel normal when God delivers you 
it goes against everything your body has been trying to do for whatever spirit has lodged itself there has been in training mode so it has trained you to feel a certain way to do a certain thing so when deliverance comes it goes against everything your body is telling you that's why it doesn't feel normal but I commend you in the name of Jesus to let it go right now wherever you are Hi-ya-ya. deliverance is here he said if the kingdom comes it's here so the altar is open I'm not going to pull you I'm not going to push you but if you want your miracle you better run to this altar hallelujah I said if you want your miracle you better run to this altar and you better allow Jesus to do when you get here come on you're not looking for a man you're looking for the man you're looking for the one that bought the price ha and he will do i said he will do i said he will do whatever you stand in need of tell him i need you lord If he tells you to leap, you better leap. If he tells you to lift up your feet, you better lift them up. For in that moment of the instructions, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. Hear me. Shut the Baba. Reshando Kosimaya. Haya. You will never speak in tongues keeping your mouth shut. If he tells you to open your mouth, uh, open your mouth. Uh, for out of your belly uh, will flow rivers uh, of living water. Rasho Yabaha. He. He. For he that uh, dwelleth in the secret place uh, is listening unto you. Tell him. Hi, yeah, yeah, Shakababa, and he hears you. He hears you. Thank you much for each and every one of you who have joined with us today in services virtually and in person. It has been a blessing being in the house of the Lord on today. Oh, you can do better than that. If you've been blessed by the word, come on, you can bless God. All right, let me be honest. He deserves a standing ovation. Come on, we can do better than that. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now let's give it to him. Come on. Come on. If you heard from heaven on today, come on. Bless the Lord. We're not going to hold you long. We just want to make sure God knows that we appreciate him. We thank him for everything that he has done. If you are watching us, you desire to be a blessing to the ministry. Our media ministry has probably penned the number of ways that you can be a blessing to the ministry. You have dollar sign, NBHOP, uh, through that's one of the mediums. If you will, PayPal, we have give LaFly. Uh, and the list goes on and on, you know, for you to be able to be so seed into the ministry. Uh, that's number one. Number two, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, we believe that, you know, by you confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart, the Lord Jesus, that he died for you and that he rose again, your sins are covered. Amen. You confess, ask the Lord to forgive you. He forgives you. As the Bible says in Romans, thou shalt be saved from there. And so if you pray to prayer and asking God to forgive you during the course of this services, during the course of the ministry, uh, if you are by Bishop Manigault, we believe that you are born again. Now, guess what? You need a pastor. You need a cover everything that God created praise the Lord that's precious has a covering if you think about it we are spiritual beings in an earth suit that's number one number two if we look at fruit you know if you want to if you like an orange you have to peel it take the peeling or the covering off first to get to the good stuff a banana the same way gold is hidden you got to dig for it to get to a silver is, is the same way it's hidden you got to dig to get to it I'm here to tell you that you need a covering and so having said that, I know a real good pastor at 5116 Town Road, Baltimore, Maryland. Come and allow yourself to be covered. If you cannot physically get here, we understand. A lot of things have changed about the church. Do me a favor. Put something in the chat. We will make sure we reach out to you. Praise the name of the Lord. But if you're looking for a pastor, come see about us. Reach out and let us know. We will be more than happy to cover you. Amen. The other thing, if you gave your life to the Lord, here's the other thing. You can't be out there by yourself. Once you give your life to the Lord, you're a newborn. God then turns you over to the church. Amen. And we want to serve as a sur surrogate mom or dad. 
understand that you're excited right now you're giving your life to the lord you're a brand new creature in christ but you need a big brother or big sister to walk you through that process link up with us amen if you can't get here find a good church home sit under good preaching and good teaching apply it to your life and watch you begin to experience what we know is the promised abundant life amen so having said that church we want to pray out for those of us who have joined us virtually heavenly father in jesus name we thank you for this time of worship this time of celebration this time of power uh, the word was taught it was preached and then the man of god came back and followed it up but father under your leading or by your leading with power and demonstration we give you glory we give you honor and praise for each and every person that tuned in on today now god we already know by faith that your word never goes out and come back without accomplishing that which it was sent to do so we thank you in advance for the testimonies that we're getting ready to hear about how people's lives will change how they will heal delivered and set free we rejoice in the mighty name of jesus once again for the work that has been done because we're able to declare today that hell has lost another one thank you jesus for victory hallelujah glory be to your name in your mighty name we pray amen and amen god bless you be encouraged and know this much you ain't seen nothing yet the best is yet to come <laughs>